Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Good day to all. I am Dr. Carmencita Padilla, one of the proponents of the newborn screening program in the Philippines. Join me in uncovering the wonderful story of newborn screening in our country. Together, let's zoom in on what makes newborn screening a comprehensive program for every Filipino here at Newborn Screening in Focus. In the first season, we had an extensive discussion about the birth of newborn screening program in the Philippines. The collection and management of samples, the factors that might affect newborn screening results, how the newborn screening centers cope with the challenges brought about by the pandemic, and in detail discuss the featured congenital disorders. In this second season, join us again as we, as we dive deep into the systems of the Philippine newborn screening, study the partner organizations and their role in making newborn screening an outstanding program, and in detail discuss some congenital disorders from our ENBS panel of disorders. This video series serves as an educational platform for our newborn screening coordinators, one in every 7,200 health facilities throughout the country. But just like all accomplished programs, the success of this video series relies on the consolidated effort of many sectors, the newborn screening centers, the satellite and continuing clinics, and our partner organizations, such as the Centers for Human Genetic Services, the DOH, PhilHealth, and many more. We hope that with your continued support, we'll be able to achieve our ultimate mission of setting a world-class newborn screening program in the country. So without further ado, take a seat, get comfortable, as you're in for quite an adventure here at Newborn Screening in Focus. Ang aking pong mga anak ay na-detect na mga PKU, phenylketonuria. Mahina lang ang metabolism sa pag-digest ng protein na pumapasok sa kanilang katawan. Kailangan na sila'y diet. May posibilidad po ng kanilang mental ability ay mabawasan. Dalawa po silang magkapatid. Bali yung panganay ko, kung saan late na ang diagnosis ng sakit niya eh. Two years old siya, ipinangan ko itong bunso ko. So after na madetect itong bunso ko, saka pa lang na, ano, na conclude na ang aking panganay na anak ay PKU din. Kung saan late detection ng panganay ko. Kaya dapat Welcome to the 20th episode of Newborn Screening in Focus Season 2, where we will talk about the management of hyperphenyl alanininia. This is a continuation of episode 19, so do watch it first before you proceed with this episode. Today, we have two special guests. Dr. Barbara Caval is a clinical geneticist and pediatrician and currently the chair of the expert panel on metabolic disorders. Joining her today is Dr. Ida Sonolga, a pediatric neurologist at Manila Doctors Hospital. Dr. Barbie, Dr. Ida, welcome to Newborn Screening in Focus. Thank you, Dr. Manchit. This is a great privilege for me to be joining this program of yours. Thank you, thank you Dr. Ida. Dr. Barbie? Yes, hello to everyone, to all the viewers, and to you, Dr. Manchit and Dr. Ida. Magandang araw. Mayong adlaw sa tanan. Okay. Maulan ba dyan, Dr. Barbie sa Cebu? No. Um, weather is fine, so I hope my signal will be good. Thank you, Dr. Barbie. But before we proceed, can we just have a, a quick recap of episode 19 by sharing with our viewers about this condition? Dr. Barbie? Yes. Um, when we had episode 19, we talked about hyperphenylalaninemia. Marami sa inyo ang narinig parati is PKU. Isa lang yon sa mga words na ginagamit to refer to hyperphenylalaninemia. Isang autosomal recessive po na condition. 
Um, kung okay lang po kay Dr. Manchit, gusto ko lang ulitin yung kinuwento in the last episode about the different types so that it will be clear when we go towards management. Is that go okay? ahead, Dr. Barbie. Go ahead. Okay. So when we talk about hyperphenylalaninemia, parang may apat siya na categories. Isa talaga doon, yung BH4 defects. Yung nagkwento before na yung BH4 ay isang special na vitamin na siyang taga-activate nung uh, enzyme na phenylalanine hydroxylase. Okay? So pag ang defect mo ay nandun sa co- sa cofactor na yon ang tawag sa iyo ay BH4 defect. Pero kapag dun tayo sa enzyme, yung PAH talaga may problema, dun tayo naglagay ng kategory sa level po gano'ng kataas ang phenylalanine ng isang bata pag na-screen sa inyo. If the levels reach more than 1,000, 1,200, we'll call that classical PKU. Those are the ones we urgently want to start treatment pag gano'ng levels. But if you have levels that are between 600 to less than 1,000, they are sometimes called mild PKU. And if you have levels that are just 200 to 600, then we call them mild hyperphenylalaninemia. So parang nag-base po siya how high the levels or the highest level that child had untreated. Ganun po ang parang categories when we talk about hyperphenylalaninemia. So I hope that was clear po. Okay, so Dr. Barbie, so since you mentioned the different types, how are we managing the different types? Pare-pareho ba? Ay, hindi po. Uh, they are managed very differently. And we have to really remember that the levels matter. Kasi may critical level kami. Usually, um, in many centers around the world, um, there is a tendency to go towards 350 or higher na level parang gusto na namin magsimula ng treatment. Kasi kahit walang symptoms pa yung bata, if the levels remain high, then you will not see, but there will be damage happening to the myelin, the covering of the nerves in the brain. No? So pwede silang magkaroon ng effect later on as the child grows older. Pero pag ang levels po are 1,000, 1,200, mas severe ang effect if they are not treated early. No? So, on the other side, if we talk about the BH4, ibang iba din ang treatment niya um, because um, they don't depend on levels alone, but the fact that you are going to detect what BH4 defect is there. Okay, so uh, Dr. Barbie, so just for the uh, maybe clarifying with the, with the audience, you talked about levels, talked about treatment. So, what is the exact treatment? Are you what? What are you talking about? Ano klaseng treatment na binibigay? Okay, yung treatment na binibigay namin sa mga PKU patients o yung mataas yung level, we the number one, the cornerstone of that management is tinatawag po namin dietary management. The key part is limiting natural protein. Pag sinabi pong natural protein, ito po yung nakikita natin sa regular food, sa breast milk, sa regular na mga milk formula. So you will limit yung mga ganon kasi meron siyang maraming phenylalanine. But what do you replace if you're limiting? So itong pag-limit, kailangan po paired with what we call medical food. So yung medical food na binibigay namin ay special food na walang laman na phenylalanine. Bakit natin kailangan mag-supplement? Kasi Kung magbigay tayo ng medical food, the other needed nutrients, the other necessary amino acids, and the energy requirement ng bata magiging kompleto. Kaya yun ang parts ng management po nila. And aside from that, if I may add, hindi lang po kasi ma'am yung um, dietary, but syempre, kailangan din sila ma-monitor yung levels. Kailangan din silang makita dun sa continuity clinic. Mga doctors nila, or team of metabolic team na magte-take care sa kanila, kailangan silang ma-monitor. So, ang treatment, hindi lamang yung pagkain, pero kasama pa rin yung monitoring at yung pag-bisita uh, para makuna ng levels yung bata. So, Dr. Barbie, no, this, uh, I mean, for those who have watched um, last week's episode, 
we had a um, the continuity clinic head with us no so uh, ito yung natutulong nila no yung lahat ng binabanggit ni Dr. Barbie ngayon those are the tasks and responsibilities of uh, the people uh, assigned at the continuity clinic but you did mention that some have uh, very high levels and do all of these patients eventually have neurologic complications before I call Dr. Aida uh, that is the main goal of newborn screening that these children na na-screen po natin hindi magkakaroon ng neurologic problems. So pag nakuha po siya ng maaga at na-start ng maaga yung treatment, may chance po ma-reverse pa natin yung effect niya on the brain. Pero importante ang compliance. Minsan ang problema po natin, the challenge that comes before us as, as healthcare workers who take care of children is susundin ba nila yung plans or yung mga niriseta o yung mga dietary prescription, no? So, pag hindi sila parating nagpo-comply, there is a chance you may start to notice effects most especially on the brain. Kasi yun ang pinaka part ng body na maapektuhan. So, importante talaga ang neurologic assessment, no? So, I was very happy to know Dr. Aida um, is going to be joining us this for this session. So what you're saying, uh, Dr. Barbie, is um, compliance to treatment is very important. And if the patient uh, does not really have the right uh, dietary management at that particular time, there can be complications. So I'm going to ask now, Dr. Aida, a pediatric neurologist, what kind of symptoms may we see in these patients? How poorly can we see them? Uh, Dr. Aida. Uh, actually, I'm very happy that uh, Dr. Barbie mentioned about levels and symptoms because as mentioned and as I've seen in patients with uh, hyper T levels of 1000 and above will have clinical manifestations and what are these clinical neurologic manifestations this actually consists of most common will be intellectual disability where patients will be not be able to develop their communication function, cognitive function, you know, language function. But together with that also, they would have some mood and conduct disorder. That's why some of these patients will manifest when symptoms like ADHD or sometimes some symptoms of autism. Now, why is this possible? Primarily because as has been mentioned in the previous episode and by Dr. Barbie, because the defect is actually in the, in the protein synthesis, which is very important in the myelination, in the myelination of nerve cells, which is actually the important building block also in the development of cognition. Now, these are very important in the development of neurotransmitters, which has been mentioned before, specifically our dopamine and serotonin neurotransmitters. Now, as Dr. Barbie has mentioned, we also have to keep watch about fluctuating levels and also about levels which are lower than 1,000, those who are not actually clinically symptomatic. Because studies have shown also that even for those who are not clinically symptomatic, they may already have some manifestations of neurologic impairment. And so, as Dr. Marby has said, these patients should be actually watched out or monitored very closely. What I'm hearing from Dr. Aida is uh, if we have a case of hyperphy, it will really be best to actually get a baseline neurologic evaluation just so that we are sure that there are no early signs of the problems that you mentioned. So, two points soon and all. One is the correct. Uh, the the follow the compliance treatment and then the early detection of uh, these conditions. Now, um, I've heard the we don't want patients to have neurologic complications. So, ayun natin yun talaga. Apa talaga magkano compliance? But uh, sometimes um, there are difficulties uh, either incomplete treatment that can happen and then compliance. So. In last week's episode, we talked about the role of the continuity clinic. So now my question to Dr. Aida is, what, you are, what I'm hearing for you, from you now is that our continuity clinics must 
connect with a pediatric neurologist as part of the team so that our patients with uh, with the hyperphy and all the uh, probably the other conditions we have in the panel can have the benefit of a baseline uh, evaluation. Is this a correct state? Yes, I, like that? I, I fully agree with you, Dr. Benchit. Because in the follow up of these patients, fluctuations in the levels of phenylalanine actually may also be manifested by fluctuation in the competitive level. And there are some cases also, although very rare, may develop seizures, as has been reported, although it is not a common manifestation of patients with hyperphy, you know? So sometimes we might actually take you know, seizures as possibly secondary to fever in some patients, especially in the younger pa in the younger population or just a symptom of epilepsy, but actually this may be a manifestation of full control of their level of self alanine. So we will take on your advice and suggestion, Dr. Aida, that we will involve a pediatric neurologist in our continuity clinic so that we can have the baseline evaluation. So, so in terms of treatment, so if we have a patient with um, with this, let's say seizures, would the management be the same? Uh, in some way, yes. Okay. Primarily because when we talk of seizure management, of course, we look at the age of the patient and the type of seizures. But this time, we also have to consider the kind of medication that we're going to give in terms of the metabolism. Because as I understand, patients with PKU, patients with hyperphy, they may have some hepatic impairment. So we have to avoid drugs that will actually be metabolized by the liver. So, so we, you know, because of the new birth screening program, our patients with hyperphy grow up and eventually have um, relationships and can get married. So at this point, I'm going to ask Dr. Barbie, what happens when a mother has uh, PKU? What are the uh, signals? for the care of the baby in the, during pregnancy? It is extremely important that even as an adult, especially the woman who is affected with PKU, she has to be very, very careful about her levels. Because even though she may think it's fine, high levels may actually harm the baby who may not have PKU, but the baby, the brain development of that baby is going to become affected and you might have a brain that didn't get to grow very well and the baby may have problems even if they don't have PKU and we may not be able to reverse that with any diet. So I think that's an important point to give to our healthcare providers watching that it doesn't stop just because we started the diet, but we have to remind, especially the females, that they have a responsibility um, for their future pregnancies. So as the program matures and we get more of these children grow up and become uh, teenagers and uh, eventually have families, it is important that the metabolic control is part of the program so that the babies in their womb will not have any problems. Okay, so uh, what are the challenges now? I, the, the way I see it now is because, you know, how many pediatric neurologists do we have, uh, doctors and all the biggest? As we embark now on this uh, campaign to get every big baby to be, to be seen by, uh, by a neurologist, do we have enough specialists in, in the country? At the moment, I think we have about 150 pediatric neurologists all over the country. However, about 70% of them are in Luzon. So we have uh, actually very limited number of child neurologists in the rest of the island. And then uh, I think what is very significant also is some of our, there are around 600 plus neurologists, including the adult neurologists. And some of the adult neurologists have some training in child neurology. So probably they can help. Okay. Mas marami kayo, Dr. Aida. Dalawang po lang kami geneticist eh. And it's fine. But it's nice to hear that there are a hundred. And we will definitely connect with your organization on how we can integrate it in our long-term follow-up. I think that will be great to improve the outcome of our children. 
Uh, well, your advice is taken, and uh, we will make sure that we do something after this episode. So thank you for that. Yeah. The time is really so short, you know. We just have covered really, really the tip of this condition, but it's time to give our messages. So I'm going to start first with Dr. Aida. What will be your message to our coordinators, Swan, and then maybe to the general pediatricians who may be watching? Well, to our coordinators, first, thank you so much for taking on this responsibility, no? And I think we know that this is a lifelong disease, and it's very important to emphasize to the patients that they really have to be monitored very closely because it may affect their future generation of children. Now, to our viewers and to the rest of the uh, community, uh, please support the newborn screen. This is a great program for our country. And thank you to the team of Dr. Menchit for making these things happen. Okay, thank you, Dr. Aida. Dr. Barbie? Yes, um, thank you, Dr. Aida. I definitely agree with your message that you want to give and that they should support newborn screening. Maybe the only thing that I will really add is as the ones who are telling families that there is a condition called PKU, their child has it, it is important to emphasize that it is a condition. It is not an illness. I think we need to make them remember that because if it's a condition and we are doing something, then indeed we can assure them of the better future, which is really the whole goal of newborn screening. So thank you. Thank you for helping out this program. Well, thank you, Dr. Aida and Dr. Thanks. Barbie. And uh, we definitely will have you back in another episode of Hyperpeak. If you want to make sure that patients with hyperphenylalaninemia develop normally on all levels, physical, neurological, and emotional, long-term follow-up is essential. As health workers, our role might extend educating or reminding parents early on to make sure that the patients comply with the long-term care management plan that the medical team recommends. To our virtual audience, please send us your comments, questions, or the list of topics that you want us to cover in our succeeding episodes. Email us at info at newbornscreening.ph or you may tweet us at newbornscreenph and also include the hashtag, hashtag ENPSPH. We continue to improve our services as deemed necessary with the emerging challenges through an open dialogue about our experiences in newborn screening. It is our hope that through this video series, we extend the sharing of knowledge with greater reach, empower our frontliners, improve connectivity with newborn screening coordinators, and most importantly, provide unparalleled service to every family. Join us next week as we speak with champions for rare diseases, the leaders of the Voluntary Youth Leaders for Health and the Philippine Society for Organ Disorders will be with us to talk about the involvement, their involvement in promoting awareness on rare diseases in the country. This and more here in Newborn Screening in Focus. Nothing is more precious than seeing a child grow healthy and normal. Let's realize this through newborn screening. Newborn screening is a gift of life. You
the process na magpa NBS. Ilang patak ng dugo ang kailangan para magawa ang best. Makalipas ang 24 oras pag si baby lumabas. Gawin natin ng NBS ang lead sunod sa batas. Oh, oh, I'm a baby. Sukan 